Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. So we've covered the entire werewolf side of the tree, and uh, now we can move on to the burr. we got to move on to the big bad burr. That's right. So, well, we're going to start the bear tree with, well, the bear. The werebear himself. Now in the past, the werebear has been... Kind of the red-headed stepchild of the shape-shifting family. Uh, it's not been the particularly the best ability to use. In fact, more often than not, the werewolf is chosen over the werebear because the werewolf has other abilities that it could use. The werebear could really use a kind of like a fury ability. You know, it wouldn't be too crazy if they took fury and they just kind of like shifted it to the center and like made it so that both the werewolf and the werebear both had access to it. But I digress. Now, the werebear has some notable differences between the werewolf, and that is, of course, number one, that he has a higher percentage of life increase than the werewolf does base. Now, both of them can be modified by additional putting points into lycanthropy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, like an extra 50% doesn't uh, come in handy. And, of course, that means that the werebear can be an extra 50% higher than the werewolf ever will be. Now, the really thing, weird thing that kind of bugs me about this tree is that the lycanthropy ability is not connected to the werebear. Um, you need to put a point into werewolf, no matter what, to access lycanthropy, which allows you to actually get those additional seconds. Whereas with the werewolf, you don't have to put it to the point into werebear to get access to lycanthropy. Um, a simple change that I would really like to see them make is that um, lycanthropy is... You know, just, just take Werebear and just connect it to Lycanthropy. So that if you put a point into Werebear, you can also have access to Lycanthropy. Or just take Lycanthropy and just remove the requirement from the Werewolf. Because I don't really understand why you have to put a point here to get Lycanthropy. Um, when you literally, you, you have to do that. So it's basically just a waste of point for any Werebear. Kind of like a slap in the Werebear's face. Um, you know, just in general. Now, if you do want to get access to Fire Claws or Hunger, you still got to put a point in Werewolf and Feral Rage anyway, which is still a two-point investment. But um, at the very least, it would uh, help if you're not going for that. Now, um, not only does Werebear have more maximum life than the Werewolf, uh, there are also some very specific uh, changes to this particular doojankery that uh, makes the Werebear so nice. Um, number one, the werebear is slower than the werewolf. So this is important to note. Obviously, the werewolf has that really nice attack speed bonus um, that he gets when he levels up. So the werewolf is always going to be the faster of the two. You're going to need a considerable amount of increased uh, equipment to make him the same speed or maybe even better than the werewolf. Now, the werebear bear does, however, have a very nice damage bonus and a defensive bonus. Um, and this is something that, unfortunately, the werewolf is just completely lacking. Having completed a playthrough on the druid in Solo Cell Found P8, I can tell you that the werewolf is completely and utterly lacking of any kind of defensive capability. In fact, I'd like to take you over and show you uh, GGM Kubis, which is the uh, Solo Cell Found character that I recently played. And this is the werewolf form. Um, and this is with all of the equipment that I was able to scrape together. Um, I had actually made some pretty nice vampire bone gloves. I'm using like a smoke with 792 defense and so forth and so on. Of course, I also have a two-handed weapon, which makes it so that I don't get any defense from the shield, which is rather unfortunate. And um, as you can see, <laughs> my defense is pretty garbage at 1,145. Pretty much every single monster in the game can hit me, which is... <laughs> Not fun. Um, if a monster tries to hit me, they're probably going to hit me on the werewolf. Now, the bear has an advantage with that because, well, he just doesn't get hit anywhere near as often. As you can see, I'm already at 4,206, uh, when in my base form, I'm only in 2,003. And uh, if I level up my werebear form to its maximum here at level 27, and this is, of course, without massive plus to skills, I'm already at a 300% defense bonus. And as you can see, the defense bonus doesn't actually uh, take effect until I down-transform 
and then up transform. Um, so if you ever get like a skill shrine or something like that, or you have some equipment that you could use for pre-buffs, um, it's better to transform with the buffs so that you get those plus to skills than it is not to. Now the massive life, the massive defense, and then the off-weapon ED that it provides is uh, pretty nice. Um, the 445% off-weapon ED does translate out to a pretty hefty amount of damage. Um, as you can see, I can actually, you know, let's, uh, I have enough points, let's just level and max out both of them. Um, I'm going to transform down into uh, base form, and you can see my attack is 4,414. When I transform into the werewolf, it's still 4,414. However, when I transform into the bear, I get a very nice damage bump to 7,862. And of course, this stacks on top of other damage bonuses, like that you would get from Maul. Um, so, for instance, if I level up Maul to maximum, um, Maul can potentially provide me with a 480% damage bonus, which is a pretty hefty amount. Um, unfortunately, you do have to hit multiple times to obtain that. And we'll be talking about Maul later in its own separate video. But uh, for now, let me just say that Maul does require quite a few hits to actually reach its maximum potential. And, um, and how many hits exactly is that? I would like to actually tell you. Um, so as you level Maul up, it actually obtains what are called charges. Uh, charges. The charges actually increase with level. So at level 1 it only has 3 charges, which means it only takes 3 hits to max out the ability. However, at level 10 it's 8 charges, and at level 20 it's 13 charges, and at level 30 it's 18 charges, and at level 40 it's 23 charges, and at level 50 it's 28 charges, and so forth and so on. Now what does that actually mean? Well that means that at level 50 it takes you 28 attacks to max out the number of um, charges, which is in a, a specific bonus to, you know, the 3 to 48 percent. So as of right now, I currently have um, 16 charges, which means I would have to attack 16 times um, to increase that high enough that uh, that I can max it out. But with the werebears, 445 percent. And the malls, 480%, you're looking at a pretty massive damage bump there. Um, just just kind of ridiculous. Um, the 300% defense that you get from Werebearer is not going to stack on top of anything else um, in in the way that a lot of people expect. So what, what everyone always expects is that the... The 300% defense is just going to multiply everything that you get, like whatever the number says here, and that's 300% of that. What this actually modifies is the base number. So any base defense that you change is going to drastically increase the amount. Um, like, for instance, here, I have a just a plain Sun Spirit, which is 127 defense. And as you can see, I have 8,012. Now, if I put the Sun Spirit on, you'll notice that I gain... 500 and what is that like 508 for this 127 so the 127 is getting multiplied by the 300 now if you have another effect like say for instance you're using a fortitude uh, fortitude is a pretty common armor and it has a chilling armor effect uh, the chilling armor effect is a defense bonus as well and it will also increase your defense uh, but it will not stack with the defense bonus from the werebear. Now what it actually does is it multiplies the base. So if I down transform here, you'll see what I mean. So I currently have the chilling armor effect, which brings me to 12,481 defense, which is actually pretty damn good, uh, to be honest. And um, basically when I down transform, you'll notice that my defense is now 6,091. Uh, the Sun Spirit is still getting multiplied by the defense bonus from the Chilling Armor. And so I'm going from 5,728 to 6,091. However, when I up transform into my bear form, I'm at 11,737. And when I put the helmet on, you'll notice that I gain nearly like a thousand some odd defense. That's because the Chilling Armor is modifying the 127 by its value, and the bear is modifying the 127 by its value separately, um, which both add to the total. Um, so when you have multiple defense bonuses all stacking together like this on a target, um, you know, like the even just the smallest amount of defense from a uh, pair of gloves or something like that can be a huge boon, which is why I usually recommend to people, if you can upgrade an item, um, then do so.
Like, for instance, a lot of the times people will be using something like Frost Burns or Mage Fists or something of that nature, and, uh, and they're just using them in their base form. Well, you can upgrade them at least one tier, and the strength requirement doesn't really go up a huge amount. Um, like, take, for instance, Saigon's Gauge War Gauntlets, which are 110 strength requirement when you upgrade them the first time. Um, that's actually not bad at all, and most characters can swing that with ease. So if you are using Saigon's Gauge within your build, and you want to get a little bit of extra defense bump out of it, you can y upgrade those to get that defense. And I would not recommend this unless you're a character that's actually multiplying defense. There are a lot of characters that multiply defense. Um, Paladins with their Holy Shield multiply defense. Sorceresses with their chilling armor. Uh, as you can see, the Werebear with his massive defense bump here. Um, there's a lot of different characters that are capable of this. Now, there is another thing that the Werebear does that... Um, the werewolf doesn't. And this is um, something that was added recently in one of the patches, and it's important to talk about this one because uh, if you haven't played around with the werebear um, since the patch, the, the big the big shapeshifter patch, then you don't know about these. But basically what it does is it allows you to just be uninterruptible, like at any time. Um, so when you're in the middle of, of fighting monsters, um, they cannot interrupt you at all from any action that you take. Um, you are 100% uninterruptible as a bear, um, even if they hit you, even if they hit you really hard. Um, you, you're not going to, they are not going to uh, actually dish out any damage. Um, and to show you the mall thing real quick, uh, since I am out here, um, you can actually look at my damage and you can see it go up. So as I attack... You will notice that my damage is continually increasing uh, with each individual hit that I make. And uh, until I reach my max charges, that effect will not stop going up. In fact, let me go ahead and let it go down real quick because I think I already reached max charges while I was beating the crap out of Eldritch. And, uh, and I'll show you again. It's actually a pretty long duration. It's 20 seconds. So, uh, as you can see, I'm at 7,862, and, uh, and as I go out here, we're going to go ahead and bonk some things. So, first charge, second charge, third charge, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, oh, oh, missed, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Uh, 16 was the number of charges that we said was level 27, right? So that is the maximum number of charges that you can get. So it's important to note that uh, with the werebear, you're not going to reach your maximum potential on your first hit. Uh, it's going to take you a little while. Now, because you hit so freaking hard on the werebear with each individual hit, uh, you might want to actually focus on attack speed rather than damage output because that will um, allow you to hit faster. The werewolf doesn't have to worry about that because he has this ability that just hits multiple targets really, really fast. You don't have that luxury on the werebear, and um, it's unfortunate. Um, another very amazing ability that the werebear has access to is Shockwave. Now, Shockwave is uh, probably one of the biggest advantages that werebear has over the, the werewolf, and it's really just because you can lock down so many targets with it. Um, and I'm just going to cap it out here just for, just for you know, heat's sake. And, uh, and I'm going to show you just how ridiculous this ability can be. Uh, let's go somewhere where the monsters are nice and nasty, like um, Trav. And uh, I'm just going to show you how you can pretty much lock down just about everything with this ability. Including elites, by the way. Um, elites are not immune to stuns. They just are more difficult to stun, which is kind of like a contradiction. So if you sit here and you spam Shockwave on the targets enough, even the elites will get stunned, which is pretty amazing. And um, this ability can be spread out. You can dish out uh, stuns to pretty much everything nearby. Locking down just about everything with these. And um, Shockwave is one of those crazy abilities that just has nearly infinite uses. Um, the stun duration is 17.2 seconds, which means that if I go over here and I stun one one monster, you're like, let me see if I can find just one monster to stun. Um, this boy right here... He's just going to be stuck there for 17 seconds. I'm stunned you guys too. How about that? 
Look, now you're all stunned. Yay. Just 17 seconds just standing there doing nothing while you can wail on them. And you can. You can just walk up to them and you can start beating them to death while they're stuck there. Um, it's one of the safest builds in the game, quite honestly. Um, just simply because, number one, you have a massive defense bump, which is which is absolutely great, okay? Number two, the werebear can hit, like, insane heights as far as health is concerned. Um, if you stack on the, uh, the oak sage on top of your otherwise already ridiculous HP, um, you can very easily hit ridiculous HP numbers. As you can see, I'm sitting at 3,156, and this isn't even, like, a maxed out character as far as, like, plus the skills go. Um, you could very easily have a better helmet, obviously, more shape-shifting skills. Um, you could very easily be using, you know, like, uh, various plus to skill equipment. Instead of, uh, you know, all max damage charms, you could be using shapeshifter charms. Like, you can definitely deck out, I mean, just, like, absolutely deck out the, um, the life on the freaking werebear. And, of course, pluses to lycanthropy and pluses to oak sage and uh, are going to increase that life even more. Um, on top of this, the werebear also has access to, you know, shockwave, which allows him to stun targets for really long periods of time, and, uh, just in general is one of the tankiest beasts in the world with his completely unstoppable effect, which means that no matter what, even if you're in the middle of a fight, you can just run away. Other characters may have trouble running away. They might get locked in a faster hit recovery loop, there might be other issues... But no, the werebear, he doesn't have trouble running away. As long as he doesn't die, he's fine. Um, now, the werebear also has access to fire claws, which is um, pretty nice. And you can use fire claws on either the werebear or the werewolf. And it really comes down to um, attack speed. I do think that the um, werewolf is the superior choice, I think, for fire claws, just simply because he can attack faster. But. The werebear is no slouch either and can hit some pretty high breakpoints as well. I do believe last time I checked, though, um, the werebear, no matter how fast you make him, can't quite get as fast as the werewolf. Um, although, feel free to correct me down in the comments. Uh, hunger is also accessible with this, and um, this is actually kind of nice because although the werewolf has access to Feral Rage, which is a really nice um, attack life leech ability, um, the werebear doesn't have the same life leech ability over here. Um, so if you do need some emergency life leech and mana leech, you can have access to that. It's always been my opinion, though, that hunger doesn't really work as well as it probably otherwise should. Um, they really need to take a look at hunger and rework that ability. Um, my my personal suggestion would be to remove the negative 75% damage uh, on it um, and decrease the life and mana leech um, to... Uh, accommodate the increase in damage output. I think the main reason why people won't use this ability is literally just that. It just does no damage. Um, and also, the the lack of damage actually causes the lifesteal to be extremely ineffective. Uh, because, like, you know, if I'm doing 7,862 damage, you know, like, 72% lifesteal of that is certainly a lot, a lot. But if you take my damage and cut it, you know, down to three quarters of what it normally is... Uh, or one quarter of what it normally is, you know, it's it's not going to be anywhere near as much damage, uh, you know, life steal and mana steal. Um, overall, the werebear is definitely a tanky beast of a character, uh, but you may find that in general you're going to have some issues with his speed. Now, one thing that I would recommend to you guys is that you use a two-handed weapon over one-handed, simply because the two-handed weapons just have way better attack speed. Um, you also may want to um, avoid shields. Um, the main reason why you want to avoid shields on the bear is that the, they just have really horrible faster blocking. Um, let me pull up the breakpoints real quick. And... Um, So the druid bear form, which is different than the druid and the druid werewolf form, um, faster blocking is 12 with a zero faster blocking, um, which is really bad, by the way. Like, it's <laughs> that's, that's really, really bad. So the werewolf form just really has kind of like the worst blocking, like known to man. Um, you can put a shield on him, and if you put enough faster blocking on the character, you can get that to a 
semi decent like breakpoint as far as like faster blocking rate, but um, honestly, it's just especially at a low level, uh, you kind of really want to avoid shields entirely. Um, another interesting thing about shape shifted forms is that you can use bows, which is always a weird thing. So um, if you want to use a bow or a crossbow on a shape shifted form, you totally can. Um, you just have to make sure you have bolts or arrows in the actual slot uh, to actually get it done. Uh, and there's tons of bows and crossbows that are actually pretty damn good for um, for usefulness case scenario, like the Buriza Do Canyon, which works really good for shapeshifter druids. Uh, Wizen Draw is actually a fun one because it has amp damage and 100% deadly strike, and uh, and so forth and so on. I just to show you guys, I'm not BSing you. You can actually take any bow, any crossbow, um, and you can of course use them to attack with, and I have my maul ability here. We'll leave the panel open so you guys can see I'm not BS, and, and you can actually attack with a crossbow, which is pretty damn cool. Um, I saved this particular crossbow because it has the uh, amp damage proc on it. Um, so the entire point behind this one is to give me amp damage so that I can, uh, I can proc that on physically immune targets. Uh, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. Look out for the Maul, Shockwave, and Hunger videos coming up soon. I already have Fire Claws. Um, and as always, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.